Hi, I have big news this month. The new version of XPKit supports custom bone mapping. Now we can convert all humanoid rigs to different standards. It's like a plug adapter, but for 3D characters. It is free to download on GitHub or on my Gumroad page. This new version features a nice UI to fill the bone names of a custom skeleton and keep them for later use. Once they are saved, they can interact with the other types. Entries like Unreal Engine, Mixamo and Rigify are there as factory skeleton mappings. If you would like to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on Buy Me A Coffee. I'm a dev. Coffee is never wasted on me. So let's get into action and see how to set up our characters. We can still switch between Rigify, Mixamo, Unreal and a few others in the same way as before. But let's try a non-standard character. Here is an old dude of which I am very fond. This comedic ninja was based on a sketch by fellow artist Pierpaolo Marchetto. A very talented student of mine made a custom rig. It is simple but very well done with forward and inverse kinematic chains and a few additions like controls for hand gestures. I will use XPKit to upload this character to Mixamo, grab some animations and use them with these controls. Things don't always go smoothly on custom rigs, I will have to work around a few issues. Let's download XPKit and install it in Blender. A tab will appear in the viewport properties. If the properties panel is hidden, we can press N to show it up. The XPKit panel contains entries for the main limbs of a human skeleton. Some standard names are already available as factory presets, otherwise each entry can be filled manually. Like most animation rigs, the armature contains animation controls and deformation bones. We will set up the deformation bones first so that we can export this character to Mixamo or other platforms and we will do the control bones later. So let's display the deformation bones and start our work. First the hips root, which is def spine 1. Then we have the rest of the spine. Not all rigs have the same spine configuration. To make sure that I get it right, I usually pin the head and neck as soon as possible as they are more recognizable landmarks. Spine 2 would be the chest, and perhaps I should rename it. And then we can just fill in between. Now let's go for the legs. We select the bones for the legs, and since this character has twist bones, we can enable twist in the interface and fill the half length joints. Then it's time to set the bones for the feet and the toes. Now for the upper body, I set the shoulders, arm, arm twist and forearms bones in the same way. Then the hand, I just cannot find it because for some reason it was hidden. The fingers are the tedious part, but it's not too bad using the search. And then there are slots for some of the face bones, namely the eyes and the upper lids plus the jaw. We do not need them for Mixamo, but anyway. Now that I've finished, I can save this skeleton as a new preset. It's not strictly necessary, but it's convenient, as I can reapply it instantly or use it on characters that have been rigged in the same way. Now, if I use an XPK operator like convert bone names, I will see my new preset among the available options. I can either use that or let the operator refer to the settings in the panel. This way, I can convert the current naming convention to Mixamos. That also changes the names in the panel. I will save this character to an FBX. I have an export preset that I use for Mixamo, but essentially, it comes down to exporting the selected mesh and armature, only the deformed bones and no animation. Then log into Mixamo and select upload to... Ooh. 
this kind of stuff never happens on CG Dive. Okay, this is a good thing in the end. I can show what I do when a Mixamo upload fails. First, I import my FBX in a new scene to see what is wrong. I can see already a few bones that don't belong here. There are these two that I suppose were for squish and stretch of the head. Then a few control bones had their deform switch on. Mixamo doesn't like that many materials. Let's export and upload the character again. And there it is. Let's download some animation. Looking for the silliest dance in the library. And now I am ready for part 2. Import the animation in Blender. We want to use the animation on our controls. It's a bit of extra work, but it pays in time. So I clear my previous settings, and this time I will use the names of the controls instead. The process is just the same. Here I am not sure of this control, the reverse hips. Then for the legs, I am going to use the F key controls. This time we have a root bone and I can use the preset for the deformed bones in the deformation slot. This way XPKit has some more information about how this rig affects the character. And now the inverse kinematics controls. I activate I key in the panel stop bar and proceed. We don't really need arm I key and up leg I key, as inverse kinematics serves exactly to avoid animating them. I have to be honest on this, I don't really remember why I included those two slots, I might remove them in the future. Fingers again. At least there's only four for each hand. Now that XPKit knows these controls, I can bind them to an animated armature. I will have to use download with scan on custom rigs. Since XPKit already knows the source character, I only have to specify the rig type for the bind target, in this case, Mixamo. There it goes. Not perfect, but close enough. There is a long road ahead, but this flexibility is required for moving to the next steps. Anyway, I have a lot going on in terms of tools, assets and techniques to share, so thanks for watching this and see you soon.